All right, good afternoon, everyone. good evening, everyone. It's after 6 o'clock. Um, thanks for joining us here. I'm opening up the meeting, and this is not a formal meeting. Um, this is more of a workshop slash information slash discussion. Um, we're aware, everyone's aware, of the last board meeting, uh, we had a discussion of uh, attendance lines, uh, proposed changes, etc. And during that discussion, or during that topic, there were a lot of uh, questions that came up, um, which actually leads us to this meeting. And so, uh, staff was challenged with uh, going back uh, with, uh, with some additional information, after some additional inquiry, and um, making some proposed modifications, and also coming up with some additional information uh, based on those inquiries. Uh, we also invited uh, Mr. Mike Miller uh, from Numerics to come back uh, to help guide us through the process and also provide us with additional information. Um, with that, hand over to Mr. Miller. Good evening, everyone. It's been a long time. <laughs> there is a presentation, a uh, PowerPoint presentation. It is almost identical to the one presented last Tuesday. There are a few changes. I will kind of race through this. If you have a question, stop me. I'll point out the changes as we get through. Okay, uh, this is our first change. These tables represent the estimated outcome of a draft two reassignment plan. Draft two uh, is on the uh, Pikers back there, our elementary, middle school, and high school. We also have a PowerPoint or a PDF that we can blow up, but I think it might be easier to see on, a, on the individual maps if you want to walk around and see those. Uh, the two changes in these tables were uh, a decrease, an increase, a decrease in uh, Berkeley Middle School, 1626. Uh, that did affect the utilization. Uh, it's, a little more crowded than we had before, but uh, it's still manageable, at least for the earlier years. And there was an increase in the capacity for the Jim High School 1525. Of course, uh, we had ample room there. Anyways. So none of the other numbers have changed, just the uh, capacities of those two schools and the resulting utilization from those capacities. I'll the second batch of changes is a uh, small, I'll point it out later because the math points out. Uh, as, as Ms. Moran mentioned last time, there's an unusually shaped parcel uh, down, I can't point to it, uh, this, but uh, a very unusually shaped parcel adjacent to a non-residential uh, 2,000 acre parcel, which uh, is owned by the aluminum company, whatever the aluminum company's name is. So I made a graphic change in that boundary that affects no students whatsoever, no plus or minuses at all. Uh, students do not live on that large parcel. But it does make the map a little, look a little more reasonable to, to somebody that might be looking at it to see where they need to go to school. So this change occurs on all three levels. Uh, this is the, the elementary school change for draft two. Middle school. High school. Uh, there's no other changes to the scenarios to draft two other than those uh, kind of cosmetic changes to that one piece of boundary. So you, you took the uh, parcel of land off of the proposed draft and left it to where it was originally? Is that what you're saying? No, this, this has always been kind of a funky looking little piece there, uh, but it, it's only the geometry of the parcel. It, not affect students, so it really doesn't matter if you carve it a little larger. So this has been, uh, for several years, this has been how it looks in one, in one way or another. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So Ms. Maroon, that was one of your concerns the other night? Yeah, um, I'll have to pull it up, but I don't, the current GIS so two little finger things that you didn't like sticking out. But it is incorporated that in the no man's land. Right. I understand what you did, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it did section out to be separated. Right. Okay. 
So is there any uh, further discussion on the maps as they are in draft two? The rest no. of the presentation is... No. I, I, know I, mean, I don't feel like any of my um, input was taken in draft two, just enough to get Ms. Marone satisfied, which seems like we're just working out the vote numbers. But no input from the people in Overton or Sandy Circle or Rice Hill or any of those people were taken into consideration. So I still would not support this. I'm saying that the area around Cane Bay, where that small underserved area is, where we've moved a lot of children already to different schools, we've bounced them around already. I don't know why we can't keep them in the schools that they're set in right now, which is Fox Bank, Cane Bay Middle, and Cane Bay High. Yeah. The, uh, the reason I called the meeting is because there was considerable discussion and some concerns. Ms. Walker uh, had some concerns. Ms. Littleton, Mr. Rome, um, uh, in an effort to, to have a discussion, and Ms. Walker, I didn't have any input in these changes. It was just uh, Mr. Miller based upon what he gleaned from last meeting. The reason we're having a meeting tonight is to get input from each board member of the concerns. And what I'd like to hear is specifically uh, a concern that may, you may have, uh, Kathy, you may have, Sally, and what the concerns are. I think you've already stated the concerns and the reasons why you're concerned. But I also, if you recall in the email that I sent out, I'd like some recommendations to find out if there's anything that you could recommend that the board could uh, possibly have a majority to agree on so that we could go forward and from this point until uh, December 14th, Mr. Miller could work through those changes, possible uh, revisions, and bring it back to the board. But even if, uh, even if there are some changes, I would like to see the revised changes prior to the board meeting so that we could digest the information that Mr. Miller has put together. So uh, in an effort to, uh, to try to reach out and to come to some, maybe not consensus, but some agreement, uh, I'd like to, Sally, is there, any, is there anything, uh, I think that you mentioned the other night that you were, you were not opposed to the two K-5s. I'm not opposed to the two K-5s. Um, I, I agree with Kathy that the children have, who have been bounced around, or they feel like they've been bounced around, shouldn't be moved again. Um, it's still going to be upsetting for our families, and honestly, our teachers. I've actually gotten some teacher feedback that they don't really want to go to the other school because half the staffs so of those schools will have to be moved, and they have a relationship with their current principal. So after the last meeting, I did. After I said I supported the K through five, I did get some of that feedback. But I understand the K through five. Um, theoretically, I don't really want those uh, Fox Bank kids moved again. Um, and I struggle with moving kids anywhere in the area that Farms Crossroad would even be considered because we're saying these children won't be affected. But we don't know that we're going to be. We can never bind that future board to who's going to be affected. Um, so I think we should have restraint for those kids who could be affected in that next um, redistricting because that's going to have to happen because that school is open. But I am not opposed to the paper. Is there any, uh, have, you, have you studied it significantly to, to decide if there's anything north of the tail race that could be kept into the Berkeley bounds uh, as opposed to, to sending all of the students from that area? Have you looked at that specifically? And if so... I have. Um, the CNT Circle and uh, Overton communities specifically, the mileage, you know, just doesn't, just flat out doesn't make sense. And the folks that are um, on the riverside of 402 down the, down the Rice Hill, um, but generally there has been a huge outcry from all those people um, that their COVID has been a lot, their families have been through a lot, and when the numbers got put up here where 110 kids were moving from Cane Bay and 120 kids were moving from Berkeley um, on the high
high school level, people were very overwhelmed that they thought that we were doing this for 100 seats, and they just, why are you doing this to my family for no benefit? Um, and they're very, they're very, very upset. And I've gotten a lot more of those phone calls. But logistically, I think Overton Sandy Circle, no doubt, that doesn't make any sense to make those people drive in the other direction. Okay, Mr. Miller, you're cognizant of what Ms. Walker is saying. I, I would like to, uh, to point it out on the map just to make sure I have it. Complete clarification, but uh, before before we do, I, I do think that I need to give the backstory behind this, and many of the board members have seen this. So these, these scenarios are not in isolation from from Berkeley. They're, they're designed to be the first step in, in a longer process to balance utilization. And to balance utilization, the goal in the northern parts of the county are to try to put more kids in seats because we have a lot of seats. So the, uh, the lowering of honor in Macedonia and Timberland was, was designed to try to put more kids in those schools and um, to use the canal as a, a divider. It actually is a, is, a, is a fine balance point in, in between putting more kids into schools, into the seats, and releasing or uh, providing some not bird overburdening transportation on that side of the canal. Uh, there's one road over over the canal, and, and it makes sense transportation-wise, and it makes sense it, it, with the board's original charge of trying to balance utilization. So that's why it is where it is. But I would like you to point out to me. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the county. Uh, which areas you're talking about? Because I do have some numbers that may be helpful. If you can do that. So I have a current um, GS
we haven't traditionally split feeder patterns or we have avoided it as much as possible. I think there's some places, especially here, I think in Goose Creek you, you split some feeder patterns, but it's not what we like to do. And especially for athletics, you don't like middle school or middle schools to be split because someone's going to connect to a high school sport or a high school band. They well, now let's fix Westview. Westview's a split. You know what she's saying? It, 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 it's split. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying it, you can't you can't say we, we're not going to do it. I mean, we do it. No, so I'm saying other schools are just going to have to learn that this is what we do. And generationally, I get it. Our school, when when I was in high school, our school got split in the middle of my my high school years. Um, and we now live in my husband's childhood home. So I'm in Goose Creek and I'm in a generational home also. So I get what you're saying, but at some point, these families have to understand our county is booming and people have to be happy about that. At some point, you have to be happy about that. And we've got to move people around to make room for everyone. I mean, we do. And I don't know, I just struggle with what you're, where you're going because we are gonna make exceptions. We're gonna make exceptions for our senior children and our children do varsity sports and there are exceptions. So it's more the, the children that haven't started. So uh, it's what we're saying to circle and forward to the communities. Uh, the mileage there I think is probably the most, you know, if you're going to try to make logic out of something that's completely emotional, the mileage there is very hard for people I'm because sure. they're going in the opposite direction where they work. So, uh, I guess what I'm, what I'm thinking is, if Mr. Miller could make these adjustments for these two communities to stay, could you be supportive of the entire plan, notwithstanding uh, this situation? I, I have to get feedback. I mean, I have to get feedback from the other communities. But I mean, most of the people who are sitting here um, last time we had a meeting were from the Portsville area. So um, they have phone meetings too. And that's farther down for it too. Um, this is, cool. there's probably no scenario where um, you drop it at the tail race and new kids who have been perfectly for so long it's going to be very, very hard for me to support moving that because those people don't, they do see the growth, but it's not in their space and it's not in their community and it's not next door to them. And just to be honest, it's emotional. That this is emotional. The people who live there, it's emotional. It's not, you know, it's not logical. There's not a lot of logic to it. But I have sat and listened to too many crying mamas on the phone from kindergarten to high schoolers to be able to feel like I'm trying to represent those people and say, yes, they, they are okay with being moved to another school. I think where I'm struggling is that I hear what you're saying, Sally, but then I hear how people like me moved into King Bay and we took apart like the people that they have that been in South Carolina for years and years and years on that side of the county, they felt the same way too. Does that make sense? But then King Bay came in and we took over, or I should say we, because I live there, where I'm like, that's like a little thing I use, but I don't care. Like, you know, I mean, like we came in and took over, so then they had to make adjustments too for the growth that came that came in and then it's kind of like it's a double-edged sword sword because the people that were the natives that were here knew that the county was growing and the schools weren't the, the infrastructure wasn't there and then everyone that was coming in didn't know that there wasn't enough schools to support it so it's like everybody had a hand in it so I understand what you're saying is that you know this land and it's family and generations, but did the other side of the county experience that too before King Bay came in? Or was, did, did that well, not exist? Saying, well, the I don't know, I wasn't here at that time. I mean, there was a new school, and I think people can handle a new, people handle a new school, something that's brand new, 
some people handle a, a new thing better than being moved somewhere else. Are all those people going to that brand new school? Or do they get moved? I don't, I don't know the answer to that, so I'm asking. That whole area used to be Berkeley High School. I say Lebanon and all, Lebanon and all that area used to be Berkeley High School. Okay. Actually, if you go back to the very beginning, it was all Berkeley High School. Oh, and sure. It was on campus, sure. right? Um, almost in the spot right, right here. Um, so then Goose Creek peeled off, then Stratford was early 80s. Goose Creek peeled off, yeah. Yeah. Stratford's like 80 something. 83. 83. I would say I feel like I was a little kid, so I don't really remember. And then Payne Bay was 15 years ago. Because I feel like, it, you know, pretty soon in like a couple of, unfortunately, in like seven years, we're going to be having the same conversation going out until like St. Stephen Crow. Well, I would say those families. The opposite thing happened to me where the school that I attended got closed, and three schools got closed and put together into one school. And there are fewer kids in that one school than there were in the three schools that were closed. And so when we decide something as a board, we do have an impact on where economic growth will be and the impact on the communities. Um, and Timberland is not is in the woods, and it's not in St. Stephen, it's not in Macedonia, and it doesn't have that community like Berkeley High School or Payne Bay has that whole community built around it. And Timberland is kind of out in the middle. But we had, we, I was not on the board of high school, but the school board had a huge impact on that area. And we closed schools. And now here we are on the flip side wishing that we hadn't, you know, wishing that we hadn't to close schools down. We well, might have different attendance if you had done something differently. Right. So I just, I want to have long term vision, but I also want to respect the people who, I feel like they're in District 6 and have called me and talked to me and talked about their individual children. I feel like I owe it to them to try to voice their concern, whether it's logical or ir illogical. Um, and I'll tell you, if I live there, I would be as upset and illogical as they are because no matter if they're in fourth grade or second grade, they think I have been through hell and now I have, my family has to endorse another change and we can't like, we're overwhelmed. I mean, I talked to multiple mamas who were just falling off the phone. So I, I can't do anything but express that emotion. So I feel like I've talked with you well, long. It's gotta be something Well, well I do want to say, um, with respect to your, your comments, your feedback, your input from the previous meeting, that while the, an additional draft was not rendered, Mike did take a moment to review the numbers to figure out what it would look like if um, none of the territory north of tail race was um, adjusted and we just let the elementary school. We did take a moment to do that. But as far as um, making any adjustments or augmenting the current drafts north of the tail race, we weren't quite sure which areas to address. And so he ran those numbers as nothing would have been touched. We're reserving um, any future renditions to, to the comments that you just made on the feedback, the areas that you just identified. So based on that, you can uh, make those adjustments. So I did want to say that. In addition, um, I was contacted about uh, the, the other areas, uh, sending the Cambridge Middle School students to Berkeley Middle School and also the Cambridge High students to Berkeley High and taking a look at that area. Mike was also prepared to address that um, Change or adjustment as well. Uh, let me In guess. that area is called Winwood. Winwood. Yeah, two parts of it. The, the majority that you spoke to the parent is Winwood. There's also Lakewood, which is a little bit closer to Cards Crossroad. And so the area that Ms. Barrow was pointing out across the street from that is Lakewood, and then a little bit further down where Ferris Street starts, that would be Winwood. So the Winwood area across the street. Does anybody know precisely, excuse me, does anybody know precisely when those areas were reassigned? Maybe three times, four times. Uh, I can remember once. But just, I mean, does anybody have an answer to that? So we talked to a woman who had a child who was still in elementary school. I think maybe first year middle school. We um, had to move three times. So they started off that child's time in elementary school. Okay. Okay. 
the discussion tonight was basically to try to get the board to push together. The majority are here, several are not. Unfortunately, they were invited. Uh, but my intent is to unify the board to hopefully have some sort of a compromise such that the majority, if not the super majority, of members would support. Uh, that's why, Ms. Walford, I ask you, you know, specifically in the areas north of the tail race and you identify Santee Church Circle and Overton. Uh, I don't have an issue with Mr. Uh, Miller looking at those numbers and, and, and coming back to us in advance of the December 14 meeting. Uh, I mean, I guess I really I probably want to places where you're driving three or four miles to get to Berkeley Intermediate School and you're driving 12 miles to get to Bonner. Those people are the ones who are struggling the most. Those two communities I've heard from the most. But I don't, like if you come right down to the bottom of the tail race where Parker's is, like, you know, I don't know if that person doesn't, you know, is driving this way. So maybe a little bit more skill than those two places. But, you know, if you can drive two miles to get to this school and it's 12 or 14 to get to the other, um, even though the water is there, um, that is hard for me to, those people are, are upset. Um, and it, you know, I've asked, like, why didn't you come to the meeting? I've asked a lot of people, like, why didn't you come to the meeting? Or why didn't you come to somebody else? Or, um, they think our mind's made up. And so, you know, I, I feel like at least we're showing that, you know, we are having a constructive conversation, but most people said they felt like our, our minds were made up. And I was like, I don't, I don't think they are. That, um, that's their privilege of yeah. what they want. But. That's the whole intent and purpose of this. Now, I will say, and do honesty and fairness, if uh, if you can't be supportive of the Santee Overton, there's no there's no point in going forward with it because I mean, I'd like we're, to see we're trying to like. compromise. I would say I would like to see what it looks like on the map. I mean, okay. how many kids it is and what it looks like okay. on the map. And Mike, can you do that? Okay. Uh, Kathy, you talked about Cane Bay, and, and uh, Kelly talked about Cane Bay. Uh, I think Mr. Jackson just referred to, uh, to something about. Mike, can you um, <coughs> discuss that at Linwood area? Yes. Um, but, but also in relation to what that would mean for Fox Bay. Yes, I, I, this area is, is much more complex than and, and what it's seeing now and what it's going to see in the future. Um, the current numbers, and it looks like the new numbers are, are showing that Fox Bank is growing faster than expected. It, it's, it's likely that it's going to be cap, have to be capped in uh, the near future because there's no more room to put mobile units. So that's why Fox Bank followed up to this year's reassignment plan as uh, to try to provide some relief. Um, so there's that piece. Uh, the second thing is preliminary scenario looking at a more long range plan, which includes the K-8 school. Um, that area, the Windwood area, is kind of a pivot point. So it, 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 it goes to uh, the new K-8 school. What that might do is take some flexibility away from the K-8 school to help next to And there's a further complication if we get an additional school more to the uh, west that might be able to help King Bay. So there's a lot of things in this too. And, but the one that's bubbling up to the top is, is uh, what to do for immediate needs of Fox Bank. And that's why that piece is in there. Um, King Bay Middle, King Bay High are not quite as, as, as critical as Fox Bank, but that's why it is, is, is included the way it is. I've, I've looked at some numbers that you gave us relative to uh, Berkeley 
in the middle that these lines yeah. were, right. were affected uh, as drawn, and that's hypothetical. Uh, there would be 115 students going from Berkeley Middle to Macedonia Middle. Uh, Berkeley Middle, and we talked about the capacity, uh, and Diane redid the capacity. It was originally like 17 something, and it's back down to 16 something. So, uh, yeah, we were, we were right, uh, but it's still over 1,500 kids in that building. Um, now, in addition, King Bay, according to the plan, would be sending 104 kids to Berkeley Middle. I don't think that's I don't think that's wise. The reason we're doing some of this is to offload some of the overcrowding in Berkeley Middle. So we could we could eliminate, not eliminate, but transfer or reassign 115 students to Macedonia Middle if, if the lines are up. But in two years, the K-8 schools attendance lines are going to be drawn, and I'm sure Cane Bay Middle will be affected by that, correct? Yes. Now, there's also something else that comes into my thought process. Cane Bay Middle has, according to uh, the numbers, once the project is complete, and should be completed next week, right at King Bay Middle. Substantial. So we should be moving in. But that's over 1,300 kids, 1,370 something? 1,376 um, with the addition. That's not counting mobile units. Now, is the district planning on moving those mobile units or retaining some? If they're retaining some, we would not have to necessarily move the Cane Bay Middle School kids to Berkeley. You follow my impact here. So you could eliminate, you could you could reassign 115 kids to Macedonia from Berkeley, reducing it to 14 and something. And also Cane Bay with the trailers if we if or mobile units, if we allow some of them to stay. They could actually keep those 104 that were originally supposed to go to Berkeley Mill. That does not address the Fox Bank Elementary issue. That is a critical mass to this whole plan here. We have to reduce the number of kids in Fox Bank, right? But it does also send Berkeley High School according to the numbers, would, if this passed, send 132 kids to Temple. But they would be receiving 110 from Cane Bay. Why don't we just leave Cane Bay like it is? Because Cane Bay is not at capacity. Okay, Cane Bay Middle is at capacity, but if you retain some of those mobile units there, in two years, you're going to relieve some of that pressure from the elementary and the middle at Cane Bay by the uh, Carnes K-8. So, Ms. Walker, that seems to me uh, maybe a, not a compromise, but a, a way to relieve some of the overcrowding of Berkeley Middle by sending some to Macedonia, but not sending any from Cane Bay to Berkeley. So I'd like to see that, uh, the numbers, or we actually know the numbers, but Mr. Jackson, uh, is it feasible to, to try to, to possibly retain some of those mobile units at Cane Bay Middle? Yes, sir, it is. Um, we, we actually, as staff, had a discussion about how many, um, what would be the appropriate number of students for that particular campus. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about another middle school, the fact that they're at 1553 or something to that effect. So the, the dimensions of that campus, the size of that campus, it's, it's different. Um, I'm not, it would not be my recommendation to exceed the 1500 mark. I think we were talking about 1,470 students or somewhere around there, 1,400 
1475. Right now, King Bay Middle is capped at 1400, right? That's correct. And there's a, the overflow goes to the west end. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look like if we did what I just suggested, that's a possibility uh, that would relieve that. You still have a, a maximum, and you probably still have uh, some kids going to rescue. More no, than likely, it's be less, but yes, sir, you still have the same program. But the light at the end of the tunnel is in two years. You're going to, re you're going to draw the lines for the K-8 cars. But until then. And relieve some of that. But, but until do you change them twice? It's like, these are, these are kids' lives, you said. So we change them now, we change them two years, and then possibly four years down the road, if we go to another high school, we move them again. I'm talking about not changing them. Yeah, you're saying not changing them. I'm talking about not changing them, okay. Yeah. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. It's just until then, right? Um, I don't I don't think we should just yeah. Well, we've got to do something. We've got, we've got to have some reasonable alternatives to what we have now because the, the vote the other night did not pass. Okay, so we either need to do something or some members are going to have to change their minds and attitudes about the, the process. That's why we're here. We want to We want to listen and we want constructive feedback and we want suggestions. Just to simply to say that we don't want to shuffle kids around when nobody wants that. But it's our job. Okay, well, I'm going to finish that. Okay. okay. So, and trying to keep communities together as much as possible. If you have this group of kids that go to Macedonia Middle School, do they automatically go to Timberland, or will some of them go to Berkeley High School? They go to Timberland, if, based upon this particular plan, if it passed. As presented, if they would go to Timberland because that would be the feeder pattern. Anything north of the of the tail race would be H. E. Bonner, Macedonia Middle, and Timberland. That's why we're having the discussion about possibly adjusting those those communities within that within that area in an effort to try to unify and compromise. But if, it, if, if the compromise is dead on arrival, there's no sense in, in proposing a compromise. That's just being blunt and honest and, and transparent. Okay, so you change the 2K5 configurations, is it relieve boxing at all, and how many kids would be move from one place to the other place, or does that not have any impact on the box? It doesn't have any impact on the box. Uh, the only way to do that would be to daisy chain or domino to uh, one white school, which is what draft two is attempting. So draft two basically sends 140 kids from Fox Bank to white school. But Whitesville sends 175 to Berkeley uh, Elementary uh, and 83 to Berkeley, what is now intermediate. Yes. So there's 250 kids impacted from Whitesville going to the elementary schools in Berkeley and Fox Bank relieving 140 kids excuse me, Fox Bank to Whitesville, 140. So a net loss of Whitesville would be around 100 kids. We've got the Wildcat track, which is, which is rapidly developing. There are things happening in Whitesville that are, that are going to impact it. And hopefully a future school will, will alleviate some of those problems, but Whitesville will be pressure. When, we, um, when the Carn School is open, we expect it to be opening at full capacity because my concern is that as we're looking at this, like we don't want to open Carn's at King Vegas. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to open it where you don't have room to grow. Let me walk through the thought pattern. So that then, like, like, that's like my concern too as we're doing it's, it. It's, uh, that's a perfect concern. Um, so if I, I 
understand that the district is obligated to complete all of the structure that's being boundary. It's not developed yet. Um, projections suggest that when it is built out, however that plot that might be, it's going to fill that school uh, with K-8 as, as configured now. Um, so the board is going to be facing a, a question about this time next year about how do how big do we want that K-8 school to be? Do we want to save the room in there uh, for Carnes Crossroads? Uh, I, I would recommend that. You have, you have high needs elsewhere, but that that's that's an option. Or can we use that extra space to provide lead to either Cane Bay or next to or both? And the area that we've been discussing, the Winwood area, is kind of right there in the middle of it. And and my suggestion is, is it only if it's changed at all, it's only changing once. I, I would never recommend a, a elementary school, if at all possible, to, to, to change assignments, you know, within five years. I I raised my kid in Wake County, so I don't I know how that changes very quickly. But it would be my recommendation to look farther ahead, even at the detriment of current assignment, to make sure that we're not moving kids within their tenure. When we looked at the K-8 school, the whole model says, and in the future, if you want, there's a whole section, you can move this whole thing together, and there's a whole area that they said we can add that on later. And I said then, later's now. And we already have the people to fill that school, even if we put that addition in there. You know, so to spend more money two or three years down the road to open up the school, to build that addition versus doing it now, makes no sense to me at all. And I think the whole community feels like we build schools that are already at capacity. Um, Stratford, when it was built, it was built. I mean, and, and grew more quickly, we had put additions on, what, within 10 years of, of building it. So why aren't we accommodating, thinking of the future when we're building that school so we know it's going to be built the day it opens? Well, just like you said about thinking of the future, you know, that was the company that kind of struck home a little bit when she was saying how, you know, going back, you know, blows your mind how we closed schools and now we need them. You know, we have one school, like J.K. Brown had sitting 105 students, and but we know going forward we're going to wind up needing it because if you look at the area, it's going it's going that way um so that's going to be in the future plans to move that way up there too so i think that as we have to think about it too schools. you're right you know so it's like just you can use that million dollars a year i just think that we have to just look going forward everywhere um i guess i think i think we're spending a lot of money to keep so with, kids. So Sally, so when you said for the map of where you said for, you know, for the students, what what would be your solution? Do you have one? Like have you thought about it? I'm not, I'm not putting you on the spot, like I'm being serious. Like well, how what would you like to see happen? I mean, I feel like those people that are feel like they're a couple of miles away from the Berkeley Intermediate School. I'm just looking at our current GIS, just all. Yeah. yeah. like pull it on the GPS, but these people are a couple of miles away from Berkeley and Beats. So like Old Black Oak Road and down? Yeah, so Powerhouse Road, Macbeth Road, um, like those folks right there. Right. Those are a couple, they're a couple of miles away. So that's and unless you work at Bonner and Mass Middle, like pretty much, I mean, there's a trust place out here. I think there's, nobody's going to work that way. People are coming towards this way, they're driving their kids off, they're driving. So you would like that little section to stay? Like this, where it is. yes, this, these, mi these miles of people that are a couple of miles away. There's a, a, a good natural barrier in between. You can see where the, there's nothing there, right below, the, right there. No students in there in about a mile uh, from the intersection to the other intersection. Do you know how many students go there? There's about 100 elementary in the top part and about 100 at the bottom. And it's, so you can split it up 50 50. Maybe you know, three, four. That's, yeah. So it doesn't provide really the kind of impact as the direct two does, but it does. Uh, it does so I think there's the students taking the same back into the same day again. Is that, so that, is that what you're saying? So, so 
so what Mr. Barrow was saying that if we just keep the King Bay in and just kind of shoo, 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 scoot it down, that would be the fair compromise? Is that what I'm getting at? In a sense? Basically, this in fairness, we, we really have to address the capacity in Monk's Corner uh, as opposed to the large number of CD capacity. And Timberland has six, 615 kids. The capacity is 1,525. You got wings there that are empty. Not just classrooms, wings. The same is true at a trim at a blue ribbon school. And that's in the middle school. A fantastic school. A great school. Clean as a whistle. I, I could shave my <laughs> in the floors there and uh, they've got wings that are vacant, empty. I don't know about Bonner, but I'm sure that Bonner has plenty of space and capacity. So we got to do something to eliminate, this ain't rocket science, it is difficult because you're talking about people's children, but you've got, you've got to address the fact that you've got an overcrowding here and an abundance of seats here. So you're going to have to make some tough calls. You're just going to have to make the tough call. Now in a compromise setting and in a, in a, way, in a way to unify the board, uh, Ms. Walker, I'm, I, we can certainly agree to have Mr. Miller look at those numbers, bring back the um, Santee Circle, Overton uh, communities, take a look at it in advance of the December 14 meeting, and, and go from there. The question also, that's, it's a two-edged sword here, what about the Cane Bay? We're going to leave Cane Bay the way it is, and then in two years, restructure it, redraw the lines with the K-8, and hopefully allow some of the, some of the uh, overcrowding because of the mobile units. We could save a few mobile units there. Uh, so that would eliminate 100 and uh, Berkeley element, uh, excuse me, Berkeley Middle, it would eliminate 115 uh, not eliminate, it would transfer 115 students to Macedonia. They'd be reduced somewhat. Still 1,400 kids, a lot of kids in the middle school. Okay, a lot of kids. Nevertheless, it's a step in the right direction, and I think we need to do that as opposed to sending 104 if we came back, because there's only a net loss of 11 kids that way. This doesn't make sense to me because in two years they may have to re be redistricted anyway and with the Carnes K-8. That's just my way of thinking. Uh, but I've studied it, I've looked at the numbers, and as board chair, I want us to come to some solidarity and some agreement. Yeah, it's tough, but it's gonna have something is gonna have to be done. I think that with, if we do that, I think that when Carnes opens, that this is going to be like step one in that area, but then step two is, Sally, we're going to have to, it's because the Carnes, King Bay, Nixon area is, I mean, look how much it's grown in two years already. So in two years, it's going to even grow even more. So then, you know, it's kind of like ripping the band-aid slowly off of the northern section, so we're kind of like, slowly peeling it so in two years when Carnes opens, we're just gonna have to finish ripping it off. So the changes that we're not doing now, well, to that to the canal side, I think we're gonna have to do it in a couple of years anyway. So it's a matter, of, I think it's just, it's just, we don't have the money. We, we have to put the education out there. You know, how we get the money, how taxes work, you know, give the, the, the knowledge and the education to the public and go from there. But I think that it's gonna, you know, it eventually it's going to have to happen. So is it, do we slowly do it or we just do it, if that makes sense? Um, a, a fair compromise to, you know, transition. I think that anything with change is hard and, you know, a transition, a slow transition is sometimes easier to take than 
you know, a, a, a shock. I think that it would be very helpful with our numbers for all of us to get to see um, who our seniors and our varsity <coughs> individuals would be so that we could have a better understanding of numbers. I think that would help us too as a board um, because the public needs to understand we are going to give exceptions. You know, we, we do want our seniors to know we're not just yanking them out in a senior year. But it wasn't just seniors. When we moved um, the kids from Cambay to Stratford, it was anybody in the middle school who had already had a relationship with the high school were allowed to stay in them. And we moved them by gradual change. You know, and basically... That, like if you were playing B team, varsity, whatever, for King Bay. King Bay, if you were on the B team, say for baseball, if you were on B team baseball, we let you stay connected to that baseball program. If you were on B team softball, we let you stay connected. If you were already connected to the um, Orders program, you let us stay. or the band, we let those kids, because a lot of times it's hard to get high school kids to play in marching bands and middle school kids. What's hard to go establish those relationships? So I get well, everyone's going to go south now, but they can stay in school. Just you wait. Everyone's been playing sports, playing bands. I mean, I don't know how far we're going to take it, but it would be nice to see the numbers that we've already talked about, like that we have definitely said, yes, we're going to allow. It would be nice to see those numbers. My, so, my yeah. other opinion, just my opinion, and it's what we did when we made that last change, I, I think the board either came with an A and a B or an A and a B and a C. Um, so that there is a better opportunity for, you know, a, a pathway forward. The, the A and a B and we settled on C, which hadn't been created, and we created it on the spot. We made it up in the, I, we made C up in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Sounds about like that. And that's how I'm in this chair right now. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say, because I know the work that it will create for our cabinet. I do. I understand the work that it will create for the cabinet. But, <laughs> man, when you've got kids that are already involved in stuff, for them to try and go establish that relationship in another feeder, is, it's really hard. It, it, it becomes about who you know and how much time you've already put in. And knowing somebody who they don't necessarily know how much time you've already put in. So I just, I think that's very important and I think it'd be nice to see those numbers. Uh, with Fox Bank, um, if we have the new kids that are coming into the community, follow the, the map and just let the um, transportation. Kind of move, as well, kids move out. Well, so I, I do want to say this, um, and what, what the board decides, we're certainly going with. Um, the only thing I will say about what we learned from the, uh, the Sangaree transition back to, uh, to Stratford, one, we, we promised transportation. That became an issue. That became an issue quick. Um, we, transportation is tough enough, and we created a, a situation by promising transportation. The second part, which may be a little bit more uh, effective and efficient with, was keeping up with who was where and why. Um, there was a, I believe, a grandfathering clause that was uh, permitted, which kind of still lives on to this day. And so for the administrations of the school, and, and now we have a principal, both principals here, and they're not at their previous school. And so keeping up with that lineage, if you will, that's, that's pretty difficult. In addition, keeping up with who's still attached to the stated program, be it chorus, fine arts, um, band, um, athletics, whatever the case may be, who's keeping up with that from year to year. That's, that's the only thing, and we may be more proficient at it at this particular point in time, but transportation is definitely an issue, but then also from an administrative perspective, um, trying to identify those students that still qualify uh, under their initial growth. Um, yeah. yeah. Because you do have to think of pathways. I just this just popped in my head. You have to think about pathways too. These kids that are doing the um, if they're on you know they're on a path. Gosh. 
That's probably a conversation for another day. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not opposed to any of this. I just think I'm I, I get it. But, um, so, Mike, Mr. Miller, and members, and Kevin, and your two cents worth is, is welcome and appreciated. Um, draft two, in its current form, that would be an option. Draft 2A, the Santee Circle Overton exclusion. Make sure it's in here. I'm going to. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all over here. Y'all understand? And, uh, we don't necessarily have, we're not going to vote on anything, but if you've got any issues, any, any conflicts, any heartburn, then now speak up. Is there area here? Yeah. Uh, Bonner, Macedonia, Jim Lindner, or Becky from Draft 2. Is that what I'm hearing? Or just Bonner? I didn't, that wasn't um, clear so to me. Okay, great. I'm sure it would be the theater kind of That's That's what I assumed, but I don't want to assume. So we're talking about actual kind of stuff. Overton and Santee Circle, what is he you, you, you talking about there? Keeping us in Berkeley Intermediate along with Berkeley Mid and Berkeley High. Is that uh, what I hear? Yes, sir, because Timberland isn't even on this map, but is over there. So for these people who are close to this area specifically. So option draft two and anyway. two. That would be the only change away from this draft, too. Is that what I hear? Uh, from that one, yes. But we're talking about two B. Yes, understood. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. That's according to Ms. Wofford's uh, suggestion for the Santee Circle and Overton communities to remain in the Berkeley Theater Pad. The others, Temple and Theater Pad. Is that correct, Ms. Walker? I think that's a potential solution that All right. it's, a, it's a compromise. I'd say it's a potential solution we look at it. The other thing is I guess it came back on peace. To be or not to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, do they easier. go together or do, are they two separate? I think they, there's one job that has to be both of them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson can speak. I would if we're if we're gonna make those uh, I guess suggestions or recommendations, um, it may be beneficial to include both of those changes on the same nah. on the same draft. Um, when we when we get there and you all see it and have discussion. Well first of all, I believe the idea is to um, ask Mr. Miller to create these drafts, create these renditions and provide them out to the board members for you can provide individual feedback to me. And then based on that feedback, if there, are any, if there is any need to make future adjustments prior to the December meeting, we can do so prior to uh, having that meeting and doing a presentation. How many drafts did you want? Three or two? Three or two? We'll, I guess we'll decide if it's going to be three or two. If it's three, we can have the three. If it's two, we can have the two. Three is probably the best because there may be some people with some heartburns about a as opposed to you know, that some people may may say that the Santee Circle Overton is fine, uh, but they want to send those kids away from Penny Bay, so that would be that would be in Congress, that would be in, in, in opposition. So my my view is that you probably need to have three separate uh, entities. But that's just my my opinion. And speak up if you if you feel like you need to incorporate them all together, that's fine too. What is essential is for this, Mike, to, to, so we can look at it at least a week in advance of the, that, of the board meeting. Yeah, that's a doable, doable thing. It's going to be, you and your, and Jackson has about the sense of the, the a la carte, and it may not be a problem, it might, I don't know, the, the loading up of the middle school a concern of mine if you do it a la carte and keep 
thing first. Stop relief from Berkeley Middle when it needs relief, and then add to it somewhere. I don't know how that. Right. Adds. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Yeah, the, the numbers will tell us. Uh, that would be a critical it's process for me it's because my thought is we want to relieve Berkeley Middle. Right. But if we're not making an impact with that by including these other communities, uh, you cut off your hands by exactly. That's that is my concern. So we, I have, uh, what, would, what would adding a sixth grade to the two Berkeley Intermediate and Berkeley Elementary schools? We do have some places where sixth grade, I think Philip Simmons and Kingley maybe is an example of where kids stay at elementary school for six. And some kids start, do they, do Kingley kids go at sixth grade? What way the Kingley goes at sixth grade? Philip Simmons goes at fifth grade. At fifth grade. Goes to the middle school. Cross goes at Cross goes at seventh. Cross goes at seventh. So you'd be talking about the other way around, keeping the sixth grade at the elementary At the elementary um, school. Because those are at 60 or 80% utilization. That would also um, relieve some pressure off of the work of the middle school. If I can suggest, it says at this time, uh, the Berkeley Elementary and Intermediary keeping a clean feeder pattern with, with Berkeley Middle, that could be a step if we need to go there, we can go there. I think it's a good idea, but it's, it's something that we, it's a layer. I'm as good as we babies as long as possible anyway. 100%. Mm -hmm. Seventh, eighth grade, it goes <laughs> the mom of an eighth grade. That's a fine young man. He spoke to me on his way in the building, young man. I said, bless. Mr. Jackson's opening doors, and these youngins don't even go to the superintendent of the schools and standing there opening their doors. Hello, guys. Is that Mr. Dean? I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> right there over the top. I had to look twice. He kind of sprouted up. <laughs> you see, he's gotten big. He's gotten big. There's a lot of kids there. A lot of traffic. So, Mike, um, perhaps you could. I don't have all the information. I'm still able to hear Mr. Jackson, and he could forward that to us. I'm uh, still unclear about the Cane Bay. I heard several different yes. things uh, walking through the camp. We would basically leave Cane Bay Road and Cane Bay High alone. They were originally planning to go to Berkeley uh, Middle and Berkeley High. 104 to the middle school and a hundred and something to the high school. So two drafts, one with Cane Bay, the way it is, and the line at the tail race, and one with Cane Bay, the way it is, and moving those other communities and looking at the impact of the middle school from those two. You'd have to have several drafts for but, but Fox Bank would, that area of Fox Bank would move to, to I, I don't know how we avoid that. Okay. okay. Fox Bank's over capacity. We have nine mobile units. We will, we will not get authorization to add any additional mobile units as soon as we're teetering with the idea of a cap at the Fox Bank. And we will have to make a move back off. There's another wrinkle in there, too. If, if, if that area goes to Whitesville, Whitesville is K5, and Cane Bay Middle is 5A. So Cane Bay, you see the, the fifth graders have, have a choice, at least at this point. So that decision would have to be made. Yeah. I, that's, not a, yeah. that's not a deal with the breaker. I just said that's yeah, okay. a wrinkle you got to make here. It's a wrinkle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like all your fifth grade, well, if you're in terminal grade, wherever you are, it'll be a choice, right? Yes. I mean, that's what we've traditionally done if you're in terminal grade. I just want enough time for Mr. Jackson and his cabinet to look at it, disseminate it to the board members in advance of the meeting, and if necessary, have a brief meeting in advance of the. Uh, I don't. I don't envision that. I don't propose that. But there's a possibility. This is very important stuff. We need to do. Yeah, if you had the folks the 
their wife's phone. So they're not having to do it through school. How much of an impact would that make? So let's say you have how many, how many kindergartners did you start at Spotify? No, I mean, I know it's far more than 100, it's probably close to 200. Yeah. Okay. So if half of those are kids that would be on the change lines in two years, you know, if you put those in kindergartners, I have to Um, <laughs> if, if you were to start the line movement with new kids, then you, if, if even half of those are able to start by yourself, then it would keep the, the pressure off from building to the way. Because you have the kids that are in fifth grade and moving up to six, right, in the middle schools. So I hear what you're saying. I don't know what the net. I don't know what the net would be. Like, yeah. The the other issue with that is just from a logistics perspective, is you're sending one kid one on one thing. One neighborhood. One neighborhood. There's two buses two, going to two different places, places. Yeah. and you can break up single ones too. Yeah. Just letting them get outside the thing if they've already been moved a couple times. As they move a couple times, the answer they hope they're leaving by the end of this year. Anyway. I, I don't know that any. She just moved there two years ago. Yeah. My yeah. parents yeah. spoke with the yeah. home. It's only been in the neighborhood two years. The only daughter goes there was, came there. there was a discussion about moving that area prior to, but they, they did it to get moved. One time, when we moved to Bill Fox, I had been moving them. Right. And that was the only time. So there, there should not be an elementary child that's in school now that's been moved. High schools have never been moved. The generation of high school students, students have never been moved. 2008 to now, they've all moved from K through 12. So they originally Berkeley, 2008 came, they opened as a high school. The high school has never been rezoned from that. Only ones that were affected are the St. Marie kids from that one. And not the Winwood Berkeley area. I need to say this. Uh, if if the Fox Bank area moves back to white school, that may present complications when you're opening the K-8 school. Um, you're, you're kind of eliminating that white school piece when you open the K-8 school, so the option would be to grab the you know, it's, It gets a little more complicated. Uh, well, we have to relieve the overcrowding now. Yes. If there's an issue in two years, we'll address it. And the anticipated, if we do nothing to Fox Bank, the anticipated um, utilization is going to be what next year? The Fox Bank? Yeah. <coughs> over. Yeah, yeah, over a time period. Over 100% now. That amount would be over. 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 Is there any other uh, discussion, any other concerns, questions, suggestions from anybody? I want to thank the Kevin, I thank Mr. Jackson for, uh, for uh, hosting this and for the board members that are present. I appreciate you coming. Uh, would have uh, anticipated in the light for the entire board to come, but I'm sure that they were busy. Uh, but um, Mr. Miller will be busy. And Mr. Jackson and his team will be busy as well, so we'll look forward to uh, the emails and, uh, and communicating in, in the interim. There is no meeting, so I'm not going to adjourn. Y'all have a good night.